Good night to everyone. We welcome you once again to the Embrace, Forgiveness and Reconciliation Evangelistic Series of Meeting. At this time, we invite you to bow your heads as we have prayer to begin tonight's service. Heavenly Father, we are indeed grateful and thankful unto you for your blessings throughout this day and your sparing mercies. We ask that the blood of Jesus Christ, your Son, would wash us and cleanse us from all sin and unrighteousness. Let your abiding presence remain with us tonight, and may we sing with the Spirit and with the understanding and be drawn closer to you, even as we dwell in your courts and for the listen to your word. In Jesus' name, amen. All my help comes from the Lord, all my need, he will supply all my help.
Join us as we stand to sing our theme song, I'm Forgiven Because You Were Forsaken. I'm accepted, you were condemned. I'm alive and well, your spirit lives within me.
advantage to continue standing and bow our heads in prayer. Dear loving Father, I just want to thank you for bringing us to church today, O Lord. For waking up us, us this, up this morning, for giving us food to eat, for protecting us through the day, for giving us knowledge, wisdom, and understanding, and for bringing us, and for protecting us to come here tonight, from protecting us from causing any accident, from getting into any bad situation. I just want to say that Lord, you be with whoever is supposed to be speaking here tonight, and. You open our ears so that we could hear and put your, the word to the use as adults and not only as adults, but as youths as well, forever and ever. Amen. Good night, everyone. I said, good night, everyone. Okay, and welcome back. Welcome back to the Embrace Evangelistic Series. I must say it has been a pleasure fellowshipping with you these past few nights, for you have indeed been an awesome congregation. Your enthusiastic participation in the song service, your rapt attention to our youth as they deliver a message from God, all of these are reasons why it has been an absolute pleasure being with you these past few nights, and so I say welcome to the online audience. Yes, we see you as well. Night after night, you have been viewing, you have been listening, and you have been affirming our youths in the chat. We see you, and we love that, so we urge you to continue. Continue coming, continue viewing, and as we go through the rest of the night's proceeding, we pray that you, you will indeed be impacted, not just for this life, but for eternity. Welcome all. At this time, we will move into a prayer session. We will all stand. Choristers, we'll have a prayer chorus. So you are going to find a partner and we are going to pray for the youths of the church, for the youths of the community, and for this crusade. So we are praying for the youth of the church, as well as the youth of the community, and for this crusade.
Okay, so it's quiz time. It's that time when we test your memory of what you heard the previous night. And uh, to lead out in our quiz tonight, or to give you the questions to be more specific, will be none other than Sister Adinga Findlay. But before she comes, I have a mini quiz for you. Complete the sentence. Tonight is the birth night. Today was the birthday of our dear and lovely and ever smiling Sister Blank. Yes, Sister Karin, Sister Dinga's birthday. So before she comes to bring the, the quiz, let's all sing together happy birthday to Sister Dinga. After two. Oh, it's also Sister Judy's birthday. Okay, so we will sing happy birthday to Sister Dinga and Sister Judy. May the good Lord indeed bless you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to sisters. Happy birthday to you. May the good Lord bless you. May the good Lord bless Good night, and thanks on behalf of Judy and myself for the birthday greetings and wishes. Thank you very much. Our first question is, and they're true or false. I believe the paper was shared. Can you kindly indicate if you'd be taking part, please? You all have the pencils as well. So I would recap, the, well, I'll give the answers for last night quiz. The question was asked, was the topic for today's, Tuesday, today's Wednesday, Monday night, was it forgiveness and reconciliation? And the answer is false. It was on forgiveness. Number two, forgiveness is not excusing or letting the person off the hook. The answer is, the answer is, forgiveness is not excusing or letting the person off the hook. The answer is true. The third one, unforgiveness is poison to our bodies. The answer is true. Number four, whenever we sin, we only hurt the person whom, who offended us? The answer is false, yes. And when God forgives our sins, he sets us free from our sins and remembers them no more. And the answer is very good. So our quiz for tonight, based on last night's sermon, number one, God is waiting with closed arms for his children to come home. You would kindly indicate true or false. God is waiting with closed arms for his children to come home. That's number one. Number two, the younger son was described as having a hold on life, knowing his roles and responsibilities. The younger son was described as having a hold on life, 
knowing his roles and responsibilities. Number three, kindly just write on your paper. Number three, only the younger son needed the father's embrace. Only the younger son needed the father's embrace. Number four, the son ran to his father when he saw him afar off. The son ran to his father when he saw him afar off. And number five, the preacher stated the parable used includes all of us. The preacher stated the parable that he used last night includes all of us. And I believe everyone who was here know what parable that was. You wish to have a repeat? Yes? Okay. Number one, God is waiting with closed arms for his children to come home. Number two, the younger son was described as having a hold on life, knowing his roles and responsibilities. Number three, only the younger son needed the father's embrace. Number four, the son ran to his father when he saw him afar off. And number five, the preacher stated in the parable he used that it includes all of us. Thank you kindly. It is now time to lift the night's offering. We encourage you to dig deep into your pockets or into your purses as the ushers take their respective places. We are also appealing to you to bring an extra special offering. This will assist in deferring the cost of the crusade. Um, the youths have offered themselves completely to God. Night after night, they are taking part, doing their, their respective part. And you do not have to be left out. That's one way in which you can be engaged. You can support this venture financially. So when you come on Thursday night, on Friday night, well, you have Thursday to plan, okay? You have Thursday to put aside a big offering, a light offering to be given on a Friday night. So as the ushers take their places, we will sing, give and it will come back to you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together and running over. Let us pray. Oh, Father, we are indeed grateful for all the gifts that you have given us. You've provided for us, not only financially, but in many other ways. We thank you for the financial gifts that were given tonight. We pray that you would bless those who gave and bless us all with opportunities to earn and to give so that we can indeed return to you a generous offering. Thank you for all your blessings again and continue to be with us throughout the rest of the night's proceedings, we pray through Jesus Christ, our Lord. 
Amen. We'll now be favored with special music by Brother Rashid. Good night, everyone. You 
to goodbye And part of me I'm going home Trampled on the ground You took the fall And part of me Amen. Let's all stand for our theme song. A pleasant good night, everyone. So let's run that again. We seem a little bit dead. Good night, brothers and sisters, and visiting friends. I hope you're feeling blessed. Are you blessed? Because I'm feeling blessed. If you have been blessed so far, turn to your neighbor and say, I have been blessed. And those online, if you have been blessed so far, just type in our chat, I have been blessed. Okay, so I guess they're typing all now. So I have some gifts to give away tonight. And I'm going to ask who's visiting with us for the first time. Anybody who's visiting with us through this youth evangelistic series for the first time. I'm going to ask you to just give us a little wave. Okay? Our ushers, come please. Just keep your hand up. Another usher, we have any more?
Thank you for coming. Any youth visiting with us for the first time? Oh, she didn't get any. One more for the lady all the way in the back. We have any youths or children visiting with us for the first time? Okay. Come. The children in the back. Let us put our hands together for our visiting friends. I want to welcome Mr. Holder. I'm seeing Mr. Holder. That's my grandpa. Welcome. My good friend Zonis and Ria. Welcome. Welcome, Ava. It's good to see you. I'm missing anybody else? And Auntie Shannon. She's outside. Okay, great. So tonight, our message is captured a human embrace. A human what? Good. Susie has so many pets, but she has always wanted a snake. But her mom was terrified of them and has always refused to get Susie one. When her mother finally gives in, Susie adopts a boy constrictor, and she named it Hissy. Hissy is the nicest snake ever, and he loves to give hugs. But the last thing the other pets that Susie has wanted is to be hugged by Hissy, a boy constrictor. All Hissy wants is to fit in and hug. But will the other animals overcome their fear of Hissy and embrace him as one of their own? Let us pray. Dear Jesus, I want to thank you for life, thank you for health, and thank you for strength. Thank you for your sparing mercies that you have bestowed upon us so that we all can be here tonight. Lord, I pray that you may forgive me of my sins and cleanse me from all unrighteousness. Fill me up with your Holy Spirit as I am about to speak your word. I pray that hearts may be blessed and lives may be transformed is my prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. In God's great plan to reconcile the world to himself, he first had to offer forgiveness. Humans could never have done that by themselves. So, our first step is to accept God's forgiveness, and the second is offering it to others. The first step is to accept God's forgiveness, and the second is offering it to others. You may be wondering what the word embrace means. Now, according to the Oxford Dictionary, to embrace means, one, to hold someone closely in one's arms, especially as a sign of affection. And two, to accept a belief or theory willingly and enthusiastically. For tonight, we will focus on to accept a belief or theory willingly and enthusiastically. We'll be focusing on verses 18 to 20 of our team passage, 2 Corinthians chapter 5. We will consider the ministry of reconciliation God has committed to us and study some stories of people who have offered forgiveness and embrace to others, even when it seems the other may not accept the forgiveness and close the embrace. Now, for the past three nights, we have been talking about forgiveness. Jesus brought forgiveness to the earth while he was here. When he left, he gave us the commission to carry on his work. Paul talks about that in our team text, 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verses, verse 18. Let us read 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 18. 
Second Corinthians, Corinthians chapter 5, verse 18. And all things are of God, who hath reconciled us to himself by Jesus Christ, and had given to us the ministry of reconciliation. Okay. Now, in the second half of this verse, Paul names the ministry God gave us to do after he left. What is it? We are going to read 19 now. Nineteen, two. To wit that God was in Christ, reconciling the world unto himself, not in putting their trespasses unto them, and had committed unto, unto us the word of reconciliation. This verse has two parts. First, what did God do? He came to earth in Christ mm -hmm. to reconcile whom to himself? Us. The world. The world, exactly. The next phrase describes just what that means. How does God reconcile people to himself? By not counting their trespasses against them. Amen. Then the second part is what God gave us to do. What do you think it means that God has committed to us the word of reconciliation? Think about it. Now, this is still the first week of our embrace um, evangelistic series. First, we talked about God opening arms because forgiveness can only come from the Creator. And now we are going to talk about people opening their arms to offer forgiveness to others by embracing. All right. There is a very good example of someone who offered forgiveness in the early Old Testament in Genesis chapter 45. We see the story of Joseph's brothers, jealousy, their sale of him into slavery, and the fact that God was with him and raised him to be prime minister of Egypt and minister in charge of famine management and that his brothers had to come bowing before him for grains in the famine, but did not recognize him. Mm. Now, how do you think the brothers felt when this mighty Egyptian officially declared himself to be their lost brother? Try and put yourself in the brother's place and try to put yourself in Joseph's place. If you had been Joseph, and your brother sold you as a slave to a nearby country, how would you, how would you be tempted to treat them? I tell you. Think about it. How would you be tempted to treat them? Now let us read what really happens in verses 4 through 8 of the same Genesis. Genesis 4. Chapter 45, 45 verses 4 to 8. And Joseph said unto his brethren, Come near to me, I pray. I pray. And they came near, and he said, I am Joseph, your brother, whom you sold into Egypt. Now, friends, look at how our God works. He works in mysterious ways that we cannot imagine. And sometimes we may question God's doing, but be for certain that he has a purpose for us all. Now we may ask, why was Joseph able to be so forgiven? Look at verse 7 and 8. Verses 7 and 8. And God sent me before you to preserve you a posterity in the earth and to save your lives by a great deliverance. So now, it was not you that sent me hither, but God, and he had made me a, f a father to Pharaoh, and lord of all his house, and a ruler throughout all the land of Egypt. Mm. Now, Joseph gave God glory. Amen. In spite of his circumstances, he gives God the glory. Do you think that when he was in prison, Joseph thought this was God's plan for his life? No. 
we can be so we can be sure that it certainly was not God's plan for Joseph's brother to be so hateful or to sell, sell Joseph as a slave. God could have gotten Joseph to Egypt some other way, don't yes. you think? In, yes. But ever since sin began, God has been in the business of bringing good even out of the greatest evil. Mm. I said, ever since sin began, God has been in the business of bringing good even out of the greatest evil. Amen. Joseph had learned that because from the very beginning, when he was young and frightened and didn't know what would happen to him, he had chosen to cling to God and to faith. Joseph chose to embrace God. Amen. We can do that too. Amen. Youths, you and I can do that too. Hold on to Jesus when the women seem dark and rugged. Cling to God even when we want to give up. Cling to God when our families and friends have turned their backs on us. Mm -hmm. For we know that with God, he will never turn his back on us. Did Joseph's brother close the embrace and accept his forgiveness? We do not know the details of how they reacted at the time. But we are given a hint in chapter 50. Let us read Genesis chapter 50, verses 15 to 21. Verses 20 to 21. 15 to 21. And when Joseph and when Joseph's brethren saw that their father was dead, they said, Joseph will peradventure hate us. And will certainly request, requit us all the evil which we did unto him. And they sent a message unto Joseph, saying, Thy father did command before he died, saying, So shall he say unto Joseph, Forgive, I pray thee now, the trespass of thy brethren and their sin, for they did unto thee evil. And now we pray thee, Forgive the trespass of the servants of the God of thy father. And Joseph wept when they spake unto him. So friends, it looks as though the brothers were never really certain of Joseph's total forgiveness. Mm -hmm. Doesn't it? Yes. They weren't certain. Why do you think Joseph wept in verse 17? He wept, so Joseph wept, sorry, because of the genuine confession from his brothers. Amen. Joseph's story is a great example for us that even in terrible, even in ter even terrible things can be forgiven. Amen. I come by to let you know tonight that it doesn't matter how many times you would have messed up. God will forgive and embrace you. It doesn't matter if you feel as though you don't fit in or belong. We have a father who will embrace us. Amen. It does not matter who wrong us and do all injustice against us. Friends of mine, there is a God that will always be there to turn terrible things around. Amen. So do not lose hope. For there is a God who will always deliver us. Come on now. Another story can be read between the lines in John 4. The story of the woman at the well. Mm -hmm. Now Jesus offered the woman forgiveness. And do you remember what she did next? Let's look at John chapter 4 verses 28 to 30. The woman then... The woman then left her water pot and went her way into the city... And said to the men, Come, see a man which told me all things that ever I did. Is not this the Christ? Then they went out of the city and came unto him. Now, let's think for a minute. What kind of life did this woman have before? What kind of relationship did she seem to have with the other tongue people? Didn't she get water in the middle of the day when it was hot? Yeah. Instead of the morning with the other woman? 
And by doing this, she seems to be fairly isolated. So whatever life she would have been living, and she knows that people know of it, she would have isolated herself. Yet when she learns of the good news that Jesus had shared with her, she rushes to share it. Amen. Now the Bible doesn't say so, but don't you think it's reasonable to read between the lines that this woman was willing to offer forgiveness after it had been offered to her? Amen. Yes, she was. Because she has been forgiven, she now too can share the forgiveness. Amen. The, the whole tongue was changed because of this woman. Who could have predicted that the outcasts would change everything because of one conversation with a strange man at the village well? It seems that many did forgive the woman for her past life and accept her forgiveness for being judgmental against her. Perhaps whole new friendship began after she would have started sharing the good news of Jesus. It's also possible that some people did not give or accept forgiveness. Mm. In that case, it would have been up to the woman to remain in an attitude of repentance and live a new life in Jesus, empowered by the living spring of the Holy Spirit that Jesus promised her. Perhaps over time, others would see that she really had changed. Even if they did not see it, even if they never came to the point of reconciliation, she would need to continue to faithfully maintain an attitude of forgiveness. Amen. That's because there is a separate reason for being forgiving besides showing mercy to the person who has sinned against you. It's good for you. Whether or not the other person ever repents, it is very damaging to us to walk around refusing to forgive someone. I say it's very damaging to us to walk around living our lives as normal, refusing to forgive someone. It darkens our hearts. Yes, it, it makes does. us miserable. Yeah. Sometimes more than the original sin against us. We sometimes obsess so much over it, thinking all the time of all the harm that was done to us. Sometimes we even imagine of ways we can get even with that person. Mm -hmm. Sometimes we do not even, sometimes we even do try to get even with the person. Now, we've sinned just as much as the person did by carrying all this weight around. Now, we are sinning. And how does that help? Tell me, preacher. Many times, we would have sinned, but God still pours out his overwhelming love for us. I say many times we would have sinned, but God still pours out his overwhelming love for us. That's true. Give me one moment. Power on. Connected. Before I spoke a word, you were singing over me. You have been so, so good to me. Before I took a breath, you breathe your life in me. 
You have been so, so kind to me. Oh, the overwhelming, never-ending, reckless love of God. Oh, it chases me down, fights till I'm from, leaves the 99. I couldn't earn it, and I don't deserve it. Still, you give yourself away. Oh, the overwhelming, never-ending, reckless love of God. When I was your foe, still your love fought for me. You have been so, so good to me. When I felt no words, you paid it all for me. And you have been so, so kind to me. Oh, the overwhelming, never-ending, reckless love of God. Oh, it chases me down, fights till I'm found, leaves the 99. I couldn't burn it, I don't deserve it. Still you give yourself away Oh, the overwhelming, never-ending, reckless love of God no shadow you won't light up mountain you won't climb up coming after me there's no wall you won't kick down mountain you won't lie down coming after me there's no shadow you won't light up mountain you won't climb up coming after me there's no wall you won't kick down, lie you won't tear down, coming after me. There's no shadow you won't light up, mountain you won't climb up, coming after me. There's no wall you won't kick down, lie you won't tear down, coming after me. There's no shadow you won't light up, mountain you won't coming after me there's no wall you won't kick down lie you won't tear down coming after me the overwhelming never-ending reckless love of god oh it chases me down fights till i'm found leaves the 99 and I couldn't earn it, and I don't deserve it. Still, you gave yourself away. Oh, the overwhelming, never-ending, reckless love of God. We must remember that forgiving is not excusing. People who think they can't forgive usually think they are being asked to just let something go or to excuse it as if it didn't matter. It did matter. If it didn't matter, it's a normal human mistake and doesn't require forgiveness. But when something is a sin, 
when there is no excuse for it, still our refusing to forgive doesn't hurt the other person as much as it hurts us. Someone said that refusing to forgive is like drinking poison and hoping that the other person will definitely die. Now, we see that many times we would have messed up, but God still pours his overwhelming, us, overwhelming love on us. God has committed the work of reconciliation to us. That means he's depending on us to do for others what he did for us. Amen. For, God give, uh, for God forgives us and he embraces us. Think about this. How much harder is it for him to cleanse someone else of their unrighteousness if you are persisting in labeling that person with their sin? Think about it. Now let me end with a true story. A young woman, and we'll call her Leah. She was married with two small children. She knew that her husband, Zach, was not truly happy. But she believed it was because he was not completely committed himself to God. She did not know why he was unhappy with the marriage itself. She prayed constantly and it did everything she could to be the perfect wife and mother hoping that somehow her husband would come to God and to her. As time went on, Zach became more and more angry. At first, he would only shout and swore, and Leah would forgive him. Then he began getting violent, breaking their possessions and damaging the house. Leah forgave him and prayed even harder. Then he started hitting her. It was at this point that an older woman, Leah knew, took her aside at church and said, um, Leah, what's wrong? Leah was trying to laugh and blame the bruise on a fall. But the other woman, Mrs. Mapp, didn't smile. She said, Leah, why don't you bring the children and come with me to dinner? Let's talk and pray together. That afternoon, with the two children asleep, Mrs. Mapp succeeded in breaking through Leah's barriers and getting at the truth. She told Leah, you can't keep living like this. Leah protested, but I know that God sees marriages as sacred and wants me to forgive. Yes, forgive. You're making excuses for him. You are making excuses for him is not the same thing, Mrs. Mapp told her. You are also keeping Zach from facing any consequences for his actions. God loves Zach and wants to change him. How can he do that if you keep Zach from ever truly realizing that he is doing what he's doing to you and the children, Mrs. Mapp asked. He never hits the children, Leah said quickly. He harms the children by harming you, said Mrs. Mapp firmly. Worst of all, he's harming himself. If you truly love him, you must let him face his sin, praying hard that God will be able to get hold of him. I will help you. Pastor will help you. It was the hardest thing Leah ever had to do. Telling Zach she loved him too much to allow him to go on hurting her, their children, and their family. You have to get help, she told him, weeping. I will pray every day for you to come back, the healed and loving man I know you can be. But Zach was furious. He accused Leah of not loving him of not being a Christian, of destroying their marriage. He insisted he had never done anything a husband shouldn't do. He shouted and he swore and he threatened. But Leah's, past, but Leah's pastor and his wife, Mrs. Mapp, and the members of both Zach's family and Leah's family were all there to witness. They took him away. They would have helped him find housing and counseling. But Zach disappeared. 
heartbroken, Leah struggled to live in an attitude of forgiveness, even though she didn't know what the end would be. Would he turn to God? Would he come back? Would he accept her forgiveness? What do you think? Could you forgive in this situation, church? Even if the other person never come back, never accepted your offered forgiveness, never even admitted they'd done anything wrong, could you still hold your heart's arms open in the first step to embrace of reconciliation? Leah chooses to live in an attitude of forgiveness. As time passes, she still doesn't know what the outcome will be. She and her children can tell you that there are lifelong consequences to this kind of abuse of relationship and that forgiveness is not easy. She could tell you that it doesn't necessarily erase the hurt or anger, but she would tell you most of all that God is faithful and all and is always there for us, no matter how human beings treat us. She still hopes for a restored marriage. But if that doesn't happen, she hopes that maybe, just maybe, they will meet him in heaven and be able to fully reconcile. If not, she trusts Jesus no matter what. Friends, tonight... Do you want to fully embrace God's forgiveness? Are you willing to embrace others in spite of? Are you willing to embrace God's forgiveness and share his embrace and reconciliation with others? If you so do, why not stand as we have prayer? It doesn't matter what you have done. Every minute and every hour, God forgives. And his arms are outstretched to hug you and to embrace you. Do you want to accept his embrace? If you want to accept his embrace, I am inviting you to draw near as I invite our pastor to pray for us to accept God's embrace. Forgiveness to invite you to come to the altar. Let's sing the chorus again. Father in heaven, we all stand tonight and defile, defile sinful wretched. There's not one among us who could say that I am without sin. We have all wandered from your presence. We have all trespassed against you. We, have all, we are all sinners stand in need of your grace. We thank you for your love that you have lavished upon us. Through your son, Jesus Christ, through whom we have the ministry of reconciliation. He gave up the glories of heaven, clothed himself in humanity, came to this earth, rejected by his own people. He was despised, mocked, and laughed at. 
But yet still, despite all of that, he went to Calvary, died on that cross in order that we can be reconciled to the Father. Thank you, Lord, for love and ending. Love deep and wide. Love beyond human comprehension. Lord, could we love you the way you love us? In a lifetime, we never would be able to. Thank you for loving us, O oh Lord. When others don't love us, we know you love us. When others don't care about us, we know you care about us. And we thank you, Father, for such a love. God, we pray that we will reach out as you reach out to us, that each of us will reach out and accept your embrace, accept your forgiveness, and allow you to reconcile us to yourself. Because unless we are reconciled to you, we will never be able to be reconciled to one another. Unless we accept your forgiveness, we will never know what it means to forgive others. So God, we pray that you will reconcile us to yourself tonight and enable us to be reconciled to one another. If there is someone among us tonight, Lord, who is struggling with some question or some issue or some matter, from when, whenever, Lord, we ask that you will forgive that individual. May that person tonight confess his sins with full assurance that you are faithful and just to forgive and cleanse from all unrighteousness. Let them lay the burden tonight at your feet. Let them leave here tonight, feel free. Let the burden be lifted, O oh God, that they can walk out of this place, feel free and forgiven. And they would be able to extend forgiveness to whoever may have wounded them or hurt their feelings. Grant to God that all of us would be able to extend forgiveness to those who have hurt us and we do not have to feel any guilt a burden down with any care any longer. We thank you, Father. We thank you for the ministry of reconciliation. God, we look forward for the day when you would come to reconcile us physically to yourself when we will be taken from this world to that place you have prepared for us. It is the longing of our heart. It is our glorious hope. Bless everyone tonight, every mother, every sister, every boy, every girl, every child. Oh God, we pray each of us would know you as Lord and Savior. And may you save us in your eternal kingdom. Bless our year preacher, Sister Brittany. We thank you for her dedication and commitment. We thank you for the gift you have bestowed on her. May she continue to use those gifts for your glory and for your purpose. And all the other preachers as well. Thank you for their commitment and dedication. God, we know that our young people can do mighty things for you. Perhaps there is some young man tonight who have been wandering from you, who are hooked on jog, marijuana, whatever it is, oh God. We pray that you bring deliverance to him tonight. Bring deliverance to her tonight. Let her know, let him know that he can be like Joseph. Faithful and true, that if he trusts you and give his life for you, you can change him and make him all that you want him to be. Bless that young man tonight, oh God. Transform his life. Change him tonight and give him victory in the mighty name of Jesus. He can be a hero for you. She can be a hero for you. He doesn't, she doesn't have to live a defeated life. In Jesus, he can experience victory. We thank you for salvation. We thank you for your grace again. And we ask your blessings on all of us. Grant us a peace that passes all understanding. May we accept your forgiveness tonight, Lord. And leave your feeling free. A burden has been lifted. Grace has come to our house. We have been reconciled. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, we pray. Receive all the glory. Receive all the praise. In the name of the Father. In the name of the Son. And in the name of the Holy Spirit, let the church say, Amen. Amen. Turn to someone next to you and say, Thank God for his forgiveness. Yes, let's do that. Thank God for his forgiveness. Tomorrow yes. night is our rest night. We'll be back on Friday. And if we have any visiting, you to be visiting with us on Saturday. You're asked to register your names with our secretary. We have our Sabbath seminar. 
Register your names and let us know if you would be here. See you on Friday and have a great day. By the rivers of Babylon, where we sat down, and where we wait, when we remember Zion, by the rivers of Let me